it's so your old Uncle Ben Eller again here with another free guitar lesson for you guys. I've been getting requests for a very long time to do a lesson video about the Tosin Abasi uh, Javier Reyes Animals the Leader style guitar slapping technique that you guys have seen me do in a couple of videos of mine. And uh, it's really not that hard. It's not that bad to get down. I'd like to give you guys an idea of how that technique is done and uh, hopefully give you some good close-ups and stuff so you can really see what's going on with, with this technique so you can start incorporating it into your own playing too. Um, okay, this technique, it's, it's nothing really that crazy. Um, it's kind of a new sound for guitar, I guess. A lot of us aren't used to hearing the, this technique done on the guitar, but bass players have been doing this stuff a really long time. Um, Tosin will be the first person to tell you he picked this up from Evan Brewer, uh, awesome, incredible bass player that he used to play with and uh, check him out if you haven't, he's unreal. And I'm sure that Evan would probably tell you that he picked it up from Victor Wooten, who would probably tell you he picked it up from Reggie Wooten, uh, which if you've never heard Reggie before, he's nuts. you got to check some of his stuff out. He destroys a guitar, does some really crazy stuff. Very percussive. I don't even know where Reggie picked this stuff up from. Who knows? But I'd say he probably got the idea from watching some bass players, if I was to guess. So, I'd like to talk first about what this technique is not because the name, I think, is a little misleading when you hear slap guitar. It makes you think that it is maybe something like... This deal right here, where I'm just sort of plunking at the string with my thumb, kind of smacking it and retreating, kind of beside me here, you know, like that, just kind of smacking it and leaving it. It's definitely not that. It is not literally slapping the string like that. It's that's not what you want. Hear how it gives you these crappy choked out harmonics and stuff. You can't really make that work on a guitar using distortion and stuff like you hear animals and leaders doing. It just does not. It's not suitable for that. Especially if you play a guitar with kind of low action, you'll end up just fretting notes with your thumb. Really clumsily. Or whacking it against the pull pieces of the pickup. That's not how it works. Uh, like I said, I think the term is misleading. It's really more of a heavy rest stroke. Very heavy, very fast rest stroke being done with the thumb. Now, as for that term rest stroke, uh, that's a classical guitar term that you might have heard before. And it refers to a stroke that goes like this. See, I've got my thumb on my low B string here. I'm playing a seven string guitar, obviously. But I go through the string and rest on the one below it. see that E string being bent down a little bit like that. It's going through resting on the next string. This is different from a free stroke where your thumb just kind of travels outwards away from the string that way. Uh, it's different in that you just go straight down. You get a lot more power out of it. You can hear immediately this is a much more soft sound, whereas this is like three times as loud because you're getting a lot more power. Now, this thumping technique is basically just a really quick rest stroke. Notice every time I'm hitting that string, I'm going through and resting, as the name says, on the next string like that. I'm going through the string fast. I'm going through it pretty hard. I'm not being delicate about it, you know? and I'm really kind of whacking it with the side of my thumb. It's kind of on the side of where the nail bed is. And actually, a lot of times whenever I do this technique, I end up also kind of kind of hitting with the edge of my nail a little bit too. I think that gives it a little bit brighter tone, which you may or may not be looking for. I don't know, if you want it to be more bass-like, it might be better to do it without any kind of fingernail, but um, I kind of like that tone a little bit. It's kind of like in between slapping and using a pick. I like that, that brightness, that edge it gives to it. So your mileage may vary, though. You can do it without it. Don't worry about it if you don't have any thumbnail going on. You don't have to. I don't think Tosin does. I don't know. But uh, anyway, like I said, I'm really going through the string very quickly, very hard with the side of the thumb. That's really the part that's hitting it. Pretty much anything from the knuckle up, and you're good. You know, pretty much anything from that main knuckle of your thumb up, that's kind of what you're aiming for. And like I said, I'm going through the string. Don't just think about it as slapping it. That's where you get those choked overtones and stuff. Plus it won't enable you to do an upstroke, which we'll get to in a minute too. You need to go through it. Rest on the next one. Let me give you a good close-up here. I'm going to 
Slice iPad down here. Here's my knee. What do you think of that? So with this, here's how to do it wrong. You might get lucky and get one every now and then that sounds okay. But most of the time you get those choked harmonics that are no good. This is how it goes. I'm going down. I'm going through the string. I'm resting on the next one. Do it on any string. So here I'm hitting my E string, you know? I'm targeting that guy. I'm going through it real quick, real fast. Resting on my A string. It doesn't have to be anything crazy, like, I mean, you don't have to, you know, bend it down or anything like that, but if you're doing it right, you'll feel your thumb make contact with that next string at the bottom. Ooh, there we go. Again, try to give you a good view here. Going through, resting. That's how the downstroke that's half of the technique right there. That's your downstrokes, okay? So, um, the next thing that you need to cover is upstrokes. That's part of what makes this technique sound so cool is the upstroke section. Oh, I forgot to mention one thing. Uh, one thing really important to talk about before we go on and talk about the upstrokes and everything too. Location, location, location with that thumb. That's really, really important. Uh, there's a reason that you never see bass players slapping back here. Back here, the string is more taut. The closer you get to the bridge, the more, um, the less floppy it is. I'll put it that way, the less floppy it is. The further up the neck you go, it gets more and more bouncy. You know, you can see, you can very easily move it around like that, whereas back here, not so much. You want to hear the string being beaten around a little bit. You want it to vibrate big. You want it to really bounce around. Part of what makes that tone is you're hearing the string vibrating in such a large arc that it's actually kind of smacking up against the frets of the neck. You want that sound. You want it to vibrate big. And if you hit back here, it's not going to vibrate big. You can even see, you know, just watch the string there. It barely looks like it's moving. That's because I'm thumping back here. Watch the string as I'm up here. You can immediately see it vibrating larger, you know? That's what you want. Notice too, I forgot to mention that as well. Oh well. Notice too, I'm slapping my B string and with my free fingers here on my left hand, I am muting the strings below. I usually do this with my index finger. Again, that's totally a bass playerism right there. I'm muting every string that I don't want you to hear. Just in case this hand gets kind of reckless, gets a little out of control, and maybe hits one of my other strings. Like that. If I wasn't doing this muting, it would sound very terrible. So that's very important. Also, too, just because of the nature of how hard you're hitting the string, the other strings will tend to vibrate sympathetically a little bit, just because the whole guitar is vibrating, basically, because you smack it. So if you don't do that and mute below the note that you're hitting, uh, those other strings will ring out a little bit, especially if you have, like, well, I mean, obviously we have a B and a B here, or maybe if you're in drop A tuning, you'll have your A string ringing out sympathetically every time you slap your low A. Stuff like that. So, yeah, always mute below. So anyway, location is very important. Um, whenever I'm slapping, I keep using that term, whatever. Whenever I'm doing this thumb stuff, you'll notice that I'm generally kind of right at the edge of the fretboard, right above my neck pickup, you know? If I'm farther back, the string doesn't bounce the way I want it to. Doesn't sound right. If I'm too far forward, especially if you play guitar with lower action like I do, run the risk of accidentally fretting notes and it sounds really bad. So it's no good. You want to be more here at the end of the fretboard. Where you get the string to vibrate a lot, it's loose, you know, but at the same time you're not hitting frets. That's important. Okay, next, let's talk about the upstroke, okay? That's part of the fun. You saw me doing some upstrokes there just a second ago. Let me, uh, again, move this down here so you can get a better view of my guitar and my thumb. Okay, the upstroke, 
is literally no different from the downstroke. You can see that I am just going out the way I came. You don't really need to angle your thumb any differently or whatever. You don't really need to do anything differently. Just go out the way you came. That's all that I, that's the best way I can think to describe it. I'm going through. And I'm kind of using this uh, string that I'm resting on as almost like a trampoline to bounce back up. You'll notice if I do that slowly, that for my downstroke and for my upstroke, the string is getting deflected a little bit. See it lifting in the case of the upstroke and getting smushed down in the case of the downstroke? That's totally okay. That's what you want. Because basically whenever you do that, you're essentially making the string tighter. And whenever it rolls off the side of your thumb or your thumbnail, it wants to snap back in place, which is what gives you that good shaky, uh, you know, slap in the frets kind of sound. If you're real delicate about it, that doesn't happen. You gotta force it. And then on the way up, really just jump off of that string. It's like a trampoline. You want the string to get deflected a little bit. That's good. Now, here's another thing too. Notice as I do these things, my thumb does not move at all. That's really important. Don't try to make the action happen from your thumb. You'll get nowhere like that. You'll get this scratchy, non-thumpy sound. That's no good. The thumb, my thumb is just staying totally straight, just totally stiff like that. And I'm using my wrist to propel it downwards and upwards through the string. Again, it's important to think down and up. It's not slapping in like that and somehow ricocheting off of it with an upstroke. It's not that. And you also don't need to use any different technique for an upstroke than you do a downstroke. It's kind of like whenever uh, a beginner is learning how to alternate pick and uh, they initially will, you know, they'll get used to doing downstrokes just fine. But then when they start doing upstrokes, they kind of tilt their pick up or something. I see that all the time. They end up with, with this deal going on. When in reality, they don't need to do that. They just need to go up the way they came. No different technique. You know, it's nothing new. So with that upstroke, again, you're just going through the string and then just hopping up. That's it. And again, I can feel the string sliding off of the edge of that nail bed like we talked about earlier. And a little bit off the side of my nail, too. So if you're gripping in there deep enough that you feel it kind of hitting the side of your fingernail, that's okay. That's totally fine. Um, that, again, I think makes it sound a little brighter, a little more clear than it would if you are just using the uh, flesh of your fingertip. So totally okay to do that. The more you do this, too, you'll end up building up a pretty gnarly callus on the edge of that thumb, which will also just make it more... Um, more of a weapon just to kind of smack through the strings both ways. Plus, it'll help you, you know, not be in agony after you do this stuff for a few hours and your nail bed is shredding apart. It won't really happen anymore after you develop a little bit of a callus, which doesn't take long. Um, that's the basic idea of the thumb. Now, the way that you see, uh, again, Javier and Tosin and myself do some of these other riffs is to use your other fingers as well. We'll get to that later. Uh, if you can do this, you can certainly use those other fingers too. It's really not that difficult at all. Uh, we'll talk about that in a later video. I wanted this one to really focus on the thumb, since that I think is the most misunderstood part of this technique and the hardest to get down if you don't know what you're looking for. So I wanted to focus on the thumb the most in this video, but we'll get to some other stuff using those fingers. As a reference though, one thing that I would check out is uh, some maybe some videos about the classical technique known as tremolo. And it's spelled exactly like tremolo, like tremolo bar. It's a classical technique where you use the thumb to strike a note, and then your other fingers hit in sequence. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. On a row. Let's give you a view there. The, the aim is to, to to make this like continual sound, almost like a... I heard that it was kind of started as a way to, to imitate the way a violinist bow will just continually strike a note seamlessly. That's my air violin. I hope that was amusing. Uh, but that technique is pretty similar to what you hear guys like Toast and Javier do. Ooh, that's bad, isn't it? Obviously. 
obviously that slowed down so you can kind of see what I'm doing there. It's pretty similar to that classical tremolo technique. Actually, the first time that I heard it, infinite regression. My first thought was, is he doing that tremolo? That's what I thought he was doing. But anyway, that'll give you some insight. That'll give you some ideas about how to use those. I'll do another video too, though, where we start talking about incorporating those fingers as well. For right now, I'll talk about the thumb. Okay, here's another cool thing that you can start doing with that. If you can get this thumb technique down, obviously you can make up a lot of cool riffs. It sounds cool with a little palm muting back here too. That's just fast downs and ups right there. See that E string getting deflected? That's what I'm talking about. That's the rest stroke right there. Okay? But if you can get that going, you can come up with some cool sounding riffs. But another thing that you got to check out too is using your left hand, getting your left hand in on some of this fun. Uh, and again, at the first part of infinite regression, you already heard some of what I'm talking about. I'm talking about using left hand hammer-ons. Because a lot of these phrases that you hear uh, aren't started all the time with the right hand. A lot of them begin with the left hand. And what I'm talking about is using a, uh, I've heard this described as a hammer-on from nowhere. Uh, you can learn about those by learning like the, the, the intro to the, like Hopford Teacher by Van Halen. He does a lot of those where it starts off with a left hand note. It's kind of like you're just doing a hammer on from a note that you never picked. Just forcefully striking down on a note and fretting it. So, again, I'm not picking any of those. A lot of these phrases you can begin with a left hand hammer on and follow that with a downstroke and or an upstroke. Left hand, oh, left hand, down stroke, up stroke, left, down, up, left, down, up, left, down. Let's do it with a power chord. That gives you a really easy way to play triplets. Triplet, 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 triplet. Actually, that thing I was playing earlier. It's something that I made up to practice that technique. And again, it's all left hand note, down stroke, up stroke. to watch here is that you're getting good volume out of your left hand because you don't want that hammer on to be real quiet then followed by these two loud notes. You get this lopsided sound, it's no good. So with that left hand you really got to be sure to punch those notes. Imagine you're trying to push your finger through the fretboard. That way it's going to be just as loud as your thumps over here. So like I said, play around with that stuff. You can do easy 8th and 16th note bass stuff with just your thumb. Add in your uh, other fingers over here on the neck for some triplet bass product. Like I said, in that intro to an infant regression, you can hear some of that too. It starts with two left hand hammer-ons. F sharp and C sharp. Very aware that they're not going. By the way, they go. Oh, that's what they do. <laughs> I like the sound of it better all thumb personally. It's more even to me, so that's how I always played it. But again, disclaimer: they go down, up, uh, middle index, I guess. Anyway, so those left hand hammer-ons add in a lot of fun. They add in a lot of neat ideas that you can add on to your to your thumping and stuff, so there you go. 
Um, you could practice that downstroke and upstroke with your thumb a variety of different ways. Whenever I started getting this technique down, I just simply applied ideas and methods and techniques that I used to increase my alternate picking skill years ago and applied them to this, just thinking of my thumb as being a pit going up and down. So I would do like four note per or, or yeah, four note per string like chromatic stuff, just kind of like five, six, seven, eight across the strings. And so on. Only with my thumb here, I would go down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. I'm gonna move that again here so you can really see. Again, watch how every string, watch my knee, watch how every string really gets deflected as I'm going through that. You know, I'm resting on the next string. So if you're practicing the downs and ups, work on some of that stuff at first. Make up some three note groupings too, so you can practice those uh, left hand hammer-ons from nowhere. Maybe instead of doing four notes per string, do three per string. And so you go five, six, seven on each string. Only I'm going five, just with my left hand. I sound out the six with the downstroke. Sound, wow, that wasn't really good. There you go. Sound out the seven with an upstroke. Like that. Ooh. Oh, anyway, you get the idea. That's difficult for a lot of guitar players because we're very used to starting rhythms with our right hand. We're used to always feeling right as our rhythm hand. I shouldn't say right hand, picking hand as being the rhythm hand uh, that starts everything. So for a lot of guitarists, getting used to starting rhythms with the left hand is very difficult because you're kind of just coming in in the middle of a beat with this hand, so it's kind of disorienting. So with those, that'll be a good thing for you to practice as well. Just three notes. Hammer, down, up. Hammer, down, up. Hammer, down, up. You get the idea. That's a great way to practice that. Um, was there anything else I was going to talk about? Let's talk real quick about tone, too, because that, that really does make a big difference to the sound of this technique and getting it to work right and everything. Okay, if you're using your bridge pickup on a distorted amp, with the volume cranked all the way up. It's not bad per se, but you do lose a lot of um, nuance in there. You do lose a lot of that actual slap sound. Plus, it's just kind of a beast to control. Um, at least roll your volume knob down a little bit. That helps, at least. Just kind of clean up that tone, just a little bit. Uh, all of my guitars have treble bleeds on them too. Check that out if you don't know what that is. It just basically lets me retain all the high end as I roll the volume down. If your guitar doesn't have treble bleed on it, then whenever you roll that volume knob down, you're going to lose some of the high end, which will make this technique not necessarily sound quite as good. It won't make it sound as brilliant and clear as it would if you have treble bleed on there. So like I said, you'll at least want to roll that down a little bit. Your best option, though, is if you can use a split tone. Like if your pickup selector does all kinds of neat splitting options like, uh, like this guy does. I use those Stumac. Uh, super switches. Fender makes them too. Fender, Stumac, all parts, whatever. I use the super switches and I do some cool options on mine. Like with most of my guitars, it's set up to where I can have the bridge in series, just normal humbucking mode, or in parallel, which is kind of single coil sounding but still noise canceling, which is cool. I do the same thing with the neck, series, and parallel. And then in the middle, it's the outer coils of both pickups but in parallel. And it gives me this cool. <laughs> Kind of a Telecaster kind of sound, really, which is cool. Which might seem kind of unlikely considering you're playing this like shreddy, genty, whatever stuff. It seems like a weird choice to want a Tele kind of tone. Uh, but actually, if you'll check out like Tosin and Javier's guitars, both they have like middle single coils. They have all kinds of crazy switching, so you can get all these Strat and Tele uh, kind of spanky tones like that. They work better than a full humbucking sound actually, because you uh, you almost want the same kind of tone that a slap bass player uses, something with a little bit of a drop in the mids, you know, and whenever you split your pickups or you use a single coil type position or a parallel thing like I do on some of mine, you do lose a little bit of that mid-range frequency while still retaining, you know, tight lows and a good amount of highs too. So that's pretty important for the tone. Roll the volume back a little bit. If you can split your pickups, split them. Uh, in this guitar, I have the wonderful DiMarzio uh, Crunch Lab in the bridge and the liquefier in the neck, which split extremely well. I'm very, very into that sound. Uh, but if you have pickups that are not splittable, like maybe some 
some EMGs or something like that. I would recommend at least using the neck pickup. Use something that's not as hot and just wide open as that bridge pickup will be. Maybe roll the gain down a little bit on your amp. That wouldn't be a bad idea either. Um, and that'll help you get that tone. Because like I said, that's, that's part of it. I mean, this with the volume wide open and on the bridge pickup is a big difference from this. Split and with the volume rolled down a little bit. You can really hear that thumb cutting through that string with a little less gain and a little scoop in the mids. It makes a big difference, so don't count that out too. If you can't get the stuff sounding right, maybe try just a different pickup setting, different setting on your amp, roll down your volume a little bit. It's a basic idea. Okay, so like I said, that covers everything that I wanted to talk about about the thumb. We'll get to those other guys soon too. Uh, you can even use your ring finger for this stuff too. I think Javier and Tosin do use their ring finger as well as those two. But whatever, we'll get into that as well. Check out some tremolo picking exercises for classical guitar. That'll help you out very well for that technique. But anyway, I hope that gives you some ideas about this. hope that gives you a little bit of insight about uh, what your Javier and Tosin and all these other guys that are doing this stuff now. Hopefully that gives you an idea. Again, it's just heavy rest stroke, man. Go through the string, rest on the one below it. Make that string vibrate. I imagine also it's probably easier to make this happen if you have a little lower action on your guitar. Because if your strings are a mile away, you're going to have to hit it that much harder to get it kind of smacking up against the frets on the neck to get that slap sound. So I think it probably helps to have a little lower action on your guitar. Um, couldn't hurt anyway, so think about that as well. But anyway, I hope that gives you some ideas. Uh, practice away. Maybe uh, if you come up with some ideas about this, maybe some riffs or something, post them as a video response and I'll uh, accept those and put it as a video response to this. Show me your techniques and stuff and riffs that you come up with. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope that gives you some insight. And send me any questions that you got in the comments section. And I'll do my best to answer them either in text form or in another video lesson. So yeah, happy thumping. And uh, take it easy. Please subscribe to my channel. Share this video to your friends and family and all that jazz. Alright, take it easy.